All right, welcome Synchron Edisons. So this is the first video in a series I'll be doing on what's new in 3.2. What is this? You probably haven't seen this before, and uh, I want to explain what that is. One of the big features in Synchronet version 3.2 is a new config file format for the primary configuration. The files in the control directory, there were previously some INI files and some CNF files. And if you go through the upgrade process or you install a new version, new install of version 3.2, you'll get these uh, files in INI format instead. A file like main.cnf is now main.ini. And similar for um, the other CNF files, they all, all get converted. Now they're human readable, so you could actually edit them with an editor if you like. Um, unlike the SBBS INI file you might be familiar with, uh, these files are totally rewritten and reformatted when they're edited. So it is a little bit different than SBBS INI in that sense, but uh, if you actually like look at the files, you'll see that they're, they're very human readable and yes, they can be edited by hand. Just uh, don't expect you know, the exact formatting um, to be maintained. Some main new features, uh, one of them is a new user base, which I'll talk about, I think, in another video. Uh, the other is, of course, this configuration file format. And uh, I thought it was best to demonstrate this using SCFG. So as sort of a side-by-side -side comparison, I'll run uh, both uh, version 3.19, that's the current official release or latest release at this moment, um, I'll run that side by side with 3.20. So you'll notice I'm, I'm running, you know, the, the stock configuration. There's no, like, um, any changes. This is exactly as it was in, uh, in Git or in the release uh, archives. But you'll notice if you run the version 3.20 as CFG on that same, you know, stock config, you get this dialogue. You get uh, prompted, hey, a, a new install is detected. We're starting the initial setup wizard. And so if you hit escape to abort, you'll just get back to the regular config, you know, which looks like that. Um, or if you hit OK, then you'll get that splash screen you saw. And this uh, was inspired by the configuration wizard that I had written for the Synchronet control panel for Windows. So when you first run this uh, on Windows, you would get a similar configuration wizard, but it's, it's you know, a, a graphical wizard. Um, and it'll take you through, you know, a bunch of prompts for important settings that you want to set up initially. Um, and I wanted to do the same for text users only or, you know, cross-platform, right? You know, uh, if you're running this on Linux or any uh, other op future operating system uh, that's not using this GUI, um, then, uh, you know, I wanted to have a similar configuration wizard. So we have that functionality now built into SCFG. It detects a new install based on this new install flag or option that is present in the main.ini file. And it's there by default in the git and when you would make it, when you actually make a, a new install. So that's how it detects it. Uh, you can force the wizard if you like. Uh, there's also a command line option, dash w, which will force the wizard if you need to for some reason. Um, but as a new install, it will automatically prompt like this. And then now, then you can go through the, you know, different settings. It'll prompt you for your BBS name and your your name, your system, you're the system operator, uh, or system password, IP address, or or host name. Hopefully, you're using one of those. Your QWK ID, etc. Pretty much the same questions that you get through the control panel wizard. Uh, but now, you know, it's built into SCFG, so uh, you don't have to be running a uh, GUI desktop or even an operating system that uh, has any support for graphics. What else is different here? So you'll notice that in the version 3.19 SCFG, we have the date and time being displayed at all times in the upper right here. Uh, modern operating systems typically have another way to display the date and time, especially if you're running in a GUI like Windows. You always have the date and time available. So you don't really need that. It's pretty redundant. Uh, a lot of DOS programs did that back in the day. And so, you know, I don't know, I chose to use that screen real estate for that. But now, um, there's a more important thing, I think, uh, to represent up there, and that is the current configuration file that you're editing. So if you go, like, under system, then it shows you the path and the name of the file that you're editing. So in case you did want to make manual changes to the file, or if you have multiple uh, copies of configuration files, um, especially that's true with sbbs.ini, if you have multiple instances of Synchronet on different servers, then you could have different I, uh, SBBS INI files, and it's good to know which one you're editing or looking at. Uh, so, you know, that, that changes dynamically based on, you know, what you're, uh, what you're opening 
in the, the menus here. Uh, so a little bit more useful when the date and time goes away. Otherwise, you'll notice that uh, it's very similar. Now we have a new menu option here, servers, uh, and I'll cover that in a little bit. Uh, that's pretty much all the settings that you'll find in the SBBS INI file. Um, and that previously were configurable, like, you know, under each server, say, in uh, the control panel, you know, you had all these options for this, for example, for the terminal uh, server, uh, or, you know, the uh, services server, FTP server, etc. cetera. Um, now you have those built into SCFG. So again, um, you don't have to be running a GUI or Windows and you can have access to uh, easier configuration of those same settings. Uh, that's what the servers menu option is. Um, but I am going to kind of start from the top here and compare like the, the nodes configuration because things did change. Uh, some things are moved around. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and just take this, you know, one menu at a time. So everything looks the same there. Um, I think if we go down to toggle options, you'll notice a difference. So some of these options got moved. The login by user number and login by real name and always prompt for password. These got moved to a common system uh, security menu. So it's not per node. Uh, there wasn't really a good argument or reason why this was per node. So rather than, you know, if you have 10 nodes, 20 nodes, you have to set this uh, as you prefer 10 or 20 times. Instead, you set it in one place and that's in the, uh, under the system menu. Um, I think otherwise probably very similar to see advanced. Oh yes, uh, there's some things with timeouts here that have moved as well. Uh, so let me see, uh, validation user and notification users, these also moved under system. The inactivity warning and in inactivity disconnection, these options got moved as well under system. Okay, and the other difference here is if you add a node in version 319, you'd have to also get edit your SBBS INI and change that last node setting to uh, include the new higher node number so that the terminal server would always uh, actually service that node. And now you actually get prompted for it uh, here, it'll, it'll ask you in 3.20, uh, do you want to update the last node value? And so this is a little convenience. So let's check out the system menu. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot fewer options, but they actually just got sort of redistributed. So a lot of the toggle options got moved under security. I think some of the advanced as well. Let me see, uh, the password option got moved to security, the deleted users as well. Uh, I think in activity days as well. Um, so we'll look for those options here. Yeah, days of inactivity, days to preserve deleted users and the password policy all got moved under security. Let me see the new user password. You, this is it. If you wanted the new user password, so rather being a separate menu option, you get prompted for it. So I'll say yes. And then optionally you can set a new user password or NUP. We used to call it back in the day. All right, let me see what else moved. So toggle options. Yeah, there's a lot fewer. The security related settings like requiring system password, that got moved to the security menu. But basically anything security related went under security. New user values. So those look pretty much the same. Advanced options. Uh, so it did move on the menu. And we have this user inactivity uh, warning as a percentage and maximum user inactivity. So these were moved from that node menu I showed earlier. Uh, so now we have them uh, under system advanced maximum log file size so it says unlimited so if I set this to 10 meg oh then it asks me how many I want to keep as well so I'd say 10 so that you know be 100 megs of logs uh, 10 megabytes each if you want to do log rotation and I guess that wasn't an option in version 319 Loadable modules. So there's a lot more options here. Feedback module used to be hard coded. If you had one called feedback, it would load. Now it's configurable. Most people didn't even know that existed. The chat section module listing users. That's new. So scanning directories, listing files, viewing file info, the batch transfer menu and temp transfer men uh, menu. And this one defaults to a new module called temp for which is uh, basically a rewriting of the old uh, hard coded, uh, menu for tempor temporary archive uh, transfers uh, ported into JavaScript. Let me see, security options. And so previously I had security level values. So I think security options will also have the security level values. Yep, so that got moved to a sub menu under security. And then a lot of the options that were moved from here or advanced or toggle options are now under the security menu. Um, I don't think there's a lot of new things. It's just mainly rearranging and sort of organizing and putting all the security related stuff together. Uh, so you can see here like the system password of course is now here and not on the um, 
main system configuration menu. So it's one level deeper. Um, but it's also prompted during the wizard, so hopefully nobody uh, has a hard time finding that. So under servers, uh, there's a lot of options here. So you have global settings, which are settings that are common to multiple servers. Uh, this includes things like you know the overall log level, sort of the default log level used for the other servers. Uh, info is the default, debug is more, um, and then you can have less if you want to uh, sort of raise the severity, you then you get fewer lo log messages, but uh, nor info is normal. And then uh, if you want your TLS error, lo uh, error level um, to be lower, so like any TLS related log messages um, could have a maximum severity of say warning, then you won't get you know errors about TLS errors, which are kind of common. Uh, for incoming connections anyway. All right, so uh, your network interfaces and bind retries. These things are all shared JavaScript settings, uh, failed login t attempt settings. Um, so you don't have to set them per server. You can just set them here, and they'll get uh, propagated on all the servers that use these settings. So the terminal server, uh, this is where your telnet, SSH, R login, and raw TCP is all supported. And uh, you do have... Um, Quite a number of options here. There's not a lot of online help quite yet. Um, mainly directs you to the wiki. And uh, I'll be filling this out more as we go. Uh, the web server, of course, um, a lot of options. And they get more as you enable more features like CGI, for example. FTP server, uh, a lot of options again. Um, a lot of power around like the passive control. Hopefully this is easier than editing the SBBS INI file. Mail server has the most options, I think. It wins, all right? The send mail thread, um, if you enable like relay and then put, turn on some kind of authentication, you get even more options. Um, I won't talk about all of them because there's so many. So services server, this is the server that services up sort of these plugin services like the NNTP service, Gopher service, IRC, IMAP, etc. cetera. Um, that's where the, the Binkit, uh, Bink P server is a service, uh, runs as a service for incoming connections. And so uh, most of that configuration is really in this file, this services.ini file, and there's no way to edit that directly here, perhaps in the future, but right now you still gotta edit that file by hand. Um, but if for some reason you wanted to use a different file name, you could change the file name here. Networks. Um, so I'll make another video to talk about why this is new here, but we have MQTT. And this is not a message network like, you know, FidoNet or QWK networks or, or even internet email. It's very different, um, but uh, it's message queue uh, telemetry transport, or at least that's what it stood for at one time. Really, it's I think it stands for nothing, but uh, if you have an MQTT broker and you wanna see Synchronet post all its status update there and even have some control over the servers, uh, you can do that. Like I said, I'll make another video uh, detailing why and how useful this is. File areas, we do have, yes, this is big and new, um, actually. Um, so previously, you really needed to depend on template areas. Uh, so like libraries didn't have a way to set the download and upload requirements and the operator requirements um, as a default or even like a higher level requirement. Instead, um, it sort of depended on you setting a a template directory and then new directories you created with inherit the properties of that template. Well, there is a feature where you don't actually need to have files in the, the database or even have directories uh, by default. So you can auto add subdirectories of the, the parent directory if you have one specified. Um, and if you do, then you wanna be able to control who uploads and downloads and you don't have any file directories in that case. Um, so it's really kind of linked to this auto add subdirectories feature. Um, so you can have a library with no directories in the configuration yet have control over, you know, when those directories auto populate, who can add and, uh, and remove files and let me see directory defaults. So that's, this is kind of more uh, into like when you create a new area, um, new file area, new directory, the defaults that you'll get. So no longer uses the concept of a template directory. Instead, you get your defaults from this menu. Uh, whereas if you looked under 3.9, you would uh, set a directory as a template. You'd say template for new, yes, and then that becomes you know special, and it's the, the template to use for new directories. Well, I don't use that paradigm in version 3.2. Instead, uh, you have your, direct, your defaults actually explicitly configured, 
And, uh, and then you don't have to have a directory that you use the default. There can be no directories. And if you use auto add, then you'll get a bunch of subdirectories of this parent created as directories dynamically. And another really cool thing with the new configuration file format is that the internal codes are now twice as long, so you can have meaningful subdirectory names. I'll give a demo of that as well, like why that feature is, is cool and useful. Probably in a different video just because it's kind of elaborate, but uh, mainly it's for like CD-ROMs or big archives you download and extract and you don't want to have to uh, hand enter all these directories. Um, you can have it automatically populate. Command shells. So it may not be obvious in the menu here, but there is a big thing now, and that is in Synchronet 3.2, uh, command shells can be just JavaScript. You don't have to have a Baja uh, .bin file um, stub that executes then a JavaScript command shell. So I did uh, rewrite the classic command shell in JavaScript. It c behaves exactly like the old default .bin did and uh, probably be rewriting all the other uh, Baja shells in uh, JavaScript and future shells should be written in JavaScript. So yeah, JavaScript is a first class citizen now again with uh, with command shells. So I think it just, uh, you don't really see anything obvious here, but the, the help text, of course, is updated to reflect that. Command shells may be JavaScript modules, .js files. External programs. I think under online programs, that might be the only changes. Uh, no new options here, but uh, you do you will find one under time options. Uh, there's now a way to specify the, the maximum inactivity of the user. So if you have a program that you're running on your on your system that does not automatically disconnect the user when they've been ina inactive for a long period of time. So they just walk away from the keyboard for you know hours on end and it ties up on your nodes. Um, if that's a problem, then you can set this maximum inactivity. Synchronet will disconnect the user automatically. Uh, it does warn them with a few beeps um, and that's kind of what that, that inactivity percentage setting was. Um, kind of tells you, you know, how inactive do you have to be before you'll get warned with that, with that setting. Uh, let me see, where was that? Maximum inactivity warning in percentage. There you go, 75%. All right, uh, so like I said, I will make some more videos uh, detailing the other changes. Um, I just thought, you know, going through SCFG was a cool way to sort of touch on all these um, new features that are configuration related. Um, and, uh, you know, the big change to the I and I allowed extensibility and expandability. So I added more features um, because I could now. I didn't have these sort of fixed structures that were running out of space. And it was easier to expand fields like the internal codes. Um, eight characters, you know, was not enough. And uh, 16 really with the prefixes, still not enough. So now I think it's uh, 32, doubled in size, so. Okay, I hope you're looking forward to 3.20. I'm looking forward to you using it and uh, the next videos that demonstrate new stuff. So, see you soon. Synchronet, 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 Synchronet. Synchronet. Synchronet, the BBS program that I use. Synchronet. 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 Synchronet BBS software. Synchronet. 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 Synchronet and Synchronet.